Welcome back to the Torchy Blame series. And again, I'm your show host, Cheryl Cook. Today we'll be talking about the, um, the special meeting, excuse me, it was a special meeting held on April 7, 2022, about five days ago. And it was actually a special meeting to hear an emergency ordinance. And though this is not the ordinance, this is the ordinance that was originally approved, I think by the same five individuals that attended the meeting on April 22nd. Um, Alice White jumped in at some point, so we would have to go back to these minutes and find out if Alice White attended this meeting and approved this ordinance. So as you can see, this is the title, and they are repealing and replacing, of course, the ULDC, their favorite thing to do is to destroy your ULDC, and they're doing it by wordsmithing, but this time, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, to completely remove chapter 45 and replace it with chapter 45. So it's all about trees. And here we see the legislative text. This is the first page. Let's make it a little bigger here. And this is all, of course, on the calendar. <clears throat> excuse me. And this is... There's the title of the ordinance, recommended action, continue ordinance to second reading. We all know whose recommended action this is. Be, be that as it may, it is under a Jerome Fletcher II, the new city manager's listing. So if he requested this second reading of the ordinance, which is what the meeting was about, which is ordinance 2022-11, <clears throat> then if Mr. Fletcher has some responsibility in this um, situation. Now let's see, at its special meeting on April 4, 2022, which would have been mm, the day before, right? This meeting is being held the 5th, uh, the 7th. So three days before, the commission discussed the effective date and incompletion, excuse me, implementation of ordinance number 2022-46 pertaining to tree regulations, which has an effective date of 45 calendar days from adoption or April 8, 2022, which would have been the day after this special meeting for an emergency ordinance. During the meeting, commission decided that the effective date of the ordinance of ordinance 2021-46 be delayed as the existing effective date would not provide adequate time for builders to transition to a new and extensive tree code and permitting process. As the, if, as the effective date of the new regulations is April 8, 2022, an emergency ordinance is necessary to achieve the needed postponement. Per commission direction, the city attorney has drafted this new ordinance to extend for the 45 days to comply with the new tree ordinance for the builders, and this ordinance was written by Amber Slayton to amend section eight of ordinance number 202146, changing the effective date. So now they're cannibalizing their own ordinance, which repealed a section of the ULDC, your city code. All right, so what we're going to do is a few screenshots before we put a, a few edits or an edit, we're not de decided yet, of this actual meeting from special meeting for an emergency ordinance. You see how Amber Slayton's kind of slid that in and oh, she remembered. If you held a, an emergency hearing to hear the emergency ordinance, then you could ostensibly hold the meeting immediately and because Ms. Luke and Ms. McDowell are so brilliant, they decided to hold a special meeting, although they didn't know that a special meeting would allow for more notice to the public, actually only a 24-hour notice instead of an immediate notice. So there's Ms. Slayton going to bat for Jill, Luke, and Ms. Debbie. Okay, so we're, we're going to be pulling sections of the original the ordinance and we're not going to get into the body of it per se and this is the 2021-46 this is the original ordinance <clears throat> that re that removed or repealed 
the tree chapter from your ULDC and replaced it with the same tree ordinance, with a tree ordinance with differentials. Okay, so we found this, and go back to the to the ordinance. It's in the backup document, and it we, we're just pulling out some screenshots so that we can do some narration, or I can do some narration before we pre, before I present the edits from the meeting. Whereas the city commission held meetings on December third, two thousand eighteen, March four, two thousand nineteen, September seventeen, two thousand nineteen, November five, two thousand nineteen, February third, two thousand twenty, July seven, two thousand twenty one and September 15, 2021, to discuss proposed amendment to the ULDC and Chapter 11, Article 5, Tree Protection Regulations. Now, these multiple meetings are going to come in handy when, we, when I present the first edit from the meeting of the special meeting for the emergency ordinance, and that was held on April 7th but not to be confused with the regular meeting held on April 7th, which was a Thursday, and the regular meeting, it appears from the agenda, they went back to the Tom Jones Proclamation and Recognition meeting. So all that brouhaha, all of the shuffling around of agendas, all just to return back to where we were from my commission. Okay, so keep all of these dates in mind, and of course you've already pulled down the ordinance so that you can have it handy and refer back to it. So we can see from the next whereas clause in the ordinance 2021-46, I think it is. And very well thought out, obviously, very uh, multiple, multiple meetings to get to this tree ordinance. Whereas on June 8, 2021, the Northport requested the tree protection portion be brought back separately from the entire ULDC rewrite. Actually, what this was is they hired this, the consulting firm that they are consulting with for the ULDC total rewrite, and they had an extra job for them. And you are paying to have that consultant constantly rewriting the ULDC with your electeds and the consultant is basically rubber stamping or helping push this nonsense through and it's nonsense who in the world holds, keeps your uldc the city bible is what it's called this is the rules and regulations for the comprehensive plan and so cut picture it as i mentioned before the comprehensive plan is kind of a picture outlay of the city where you can put what and the ULDC codifies in words what the picture is. And so who in the world has a comprehensive plan with the ULDC constantly being wordsmith for years? So, and that's what happens when they fired the University of Florida. Remember, this is all about getting rid of Cook and DeFranco. So we hired the University of Florida, the evil people or the haters in early 2017, fired the University of Florida. And we are now in this, the city is now in this constant drag on the ULDC. It's been years, five years, six years going on. A total rewrite and then a rewrite of the rewrite. One thing that both Ms. Luke and Ms. Debbie, it was obvious that they had scripted together. It's obvious that they spoke together and they coordinated with each other behind the scenes. One thing both of them mentioned is that, especially Jill Luke, you'll hear her say, I want to extend this ordinance, meaning she wants to approve this emergency ordinance for the people, this individual people who are acting as their own developer. So our question is, how many of those people were there? Is there one? Is there two? She mentioned that she has been contacted by in either an individual or individuals, how many people that are building their own houses and not through a developer and not through a building company, how many of those people are expressed to Jill Luke and Miss Debbie that if they did not extend the tree ordinance, that there would be a hardship on these self-builders? How many? One, two, zero? 
did they just make it up? Because as you listen to Jill Luke, that is the expressed reason, and she says it, quote unquote, she's doing it only for those individuals who are building their own homes. Well, the tree runners has been a hot topic again for well over Ms. Luke's term in office. What that's about is Ms. Luke mentioned, she, she remember she's always, life begins and ends with Jill Luke. So she's constantly talking about when attention was given to certain matters. And she mentions that the tree ordinance has been discussed for the past six years. That's very convenient because that's a little bit longer than she's been in office. And I can tell you, I was in office from 20, 2012 to 2016, and even I inherited, my commission inherited the tree ordinance discussion. So this is something that is ongoing. So um, again, remember what we're asking is, she mentions it several times about homeowners who are building their own home, and she's very concerned and her heart is breaking for these individuals, how many are there? And I, you know, I wonder if we can find out if if there's a way we can do a public records request and find out. And I don't care who they are. I really don't care about the names. I just want to know how many people, Miss Luke, Jill Luke, and Ms. McDowell and Barbara Langdon, ostensibly set this tree ordinance aside for. We know Barbara Langdon did it for the developers. So, and another thing is, the Miss Miss Luke talks about how having to comply with the tree ordinance will affect these individual home builders on behalf of themselves and it would it would add a cost so our question is but material cost is going up all the time so how does how does how does that comport with Ms. Luke's statement about putting the tree ordinance aside because of cost to these few homeowners that are building their own homes and how does that comport with the fact that materials are going up and there's nothing anybody can do about that? So now we get to Miss Debbie and you're gonna be listening to this. Jill Luke's statement was about three minutes and Miss Debbie, of course, thought she was so important that it went on for four minutes. And here's a quote. If I would have understood all of the difficult perspectives, I think she said, my handwriting is terrible. And so what you're going to see is in the scripted versions of Jill Luke and Miss Debbie. Miss Debbie is obviously reading from her notes, obviously, and they are correlated. And even at, to some extent, using the same words, they both use the same words. And so they are falling on their swords, both of them, and saying how ignorant they were. And I think Miss Debbie actually uses the word that she was ignorant. I, I wrote out some of the quotes just to share them with you. Let's go to the next screenshot, by the way. I'm getting wordy. I know I am, but I, ha I kind of had fun with this one because I don't listen to these meetings um, ordinarily, the updated meetings, because obviously I believe the city's already destroyed, by the, mostly by these two individuals taking the lead from Linda Yates and Vanessa Carrison, who preceded them and worked in conjunction with them. Now, one thing to pay attention as you watch Miss Debbie is she has gotten so lazy on the dais as she sits on the dais that she's actually she actually pauses about three separate times for several seconds, reads her notes, moves her lips so she's obviously reading her notes, and then she goes into a, a dramatic, it, it, what we what we call in theater, a dramatic reading. So you can all you can listen to the inflections of her voice, watch the hand movements. So there's obviously index notes, which are a, an actress will write or a director will write on the side of their script when to have certain gesticulations when to have certain voice, there are certain voice commands that they write down. And you can actually watch the drama that Miss Debbie is participating in uh, with herself or whoever wrote her notes. And you can actually watch her. She watch, reads the notes and then she starts reading halfway through the notes. 
and, and you, you can see it for yourself. It's just absolutely hysterical. It's actually pathetic because we know that she's working on behalf of the builders and the developers and not individuals. So let's see. Um, we wanted to point out, uh, she did make the comment, there is a quote, it was my ignorance, she wrote. And she wrote, this is a, a, a process that has to be followed. And what we thought was really hysterical about this is, this is a light bulb moment that Miss Debbie finally figures out people have to follow a process. You don't just snap your fingers and something happens. There's a process involved. Like she makes a comment about how these poor individual homeowners that are representing themselves, again, we don't know how many, if any, and how they have to, how they find out how Miss Debbie actually went back after approving this tree ordinance, went back and found out there's a process to all of this. This is to me an amazing self-confession so let's move on because I've got a several more notes I want to bring out. Okay, um, again, keep an eye on her reading her notes. Sorry about my own pause. Then she, there's a quote, um, then we realized, and just like with Jill Luke, who's the we? Who is she speaking on behalf of? She's talking about, we realized that th this ordinance was complex, the tree ordinance that they went through these multiple, multiple meetings in order to understand and write the process, all of a sudden, then we realize, is her quote, is she talking about Mr. Emmerich? Is she talking about Alice White? Because they seem to have gotten what was going on because they did not approve this emergency ordinance to extend grace to the developers. All right, let's see. I have a couple more notes here. Again, pay attention to her drama, to Miss Debbie's drama. And, and again, this has been going on with her since November 2016. That's all she's about, is going up on the dice and spewing. Okay, let's see. Um, I, get, I think that's about it. She talks about one time, at one point, Miss Debbie talks about these people who are building their own house we don't know how many, if any, have to, are, are living in rented spaces. And now because of the hardships of this tree ordinance that she helped write for over several years period of time, now all of a sudden there are going to be delays in these individuals moving into their home. But aren't there many times delays in closing? Closings don't always go on time, and the, those individuals have to continue finding a place to rent until the closing takes place. And sometimes the closing never happens at all. Then what? The people have already sold their house, but yet it's just the tree ordinance that seems to be of some concern to Miss Debbie. So let's go to the clip, the, the edit, that that is a long-winded, and if you stuck with me, I, I appreciate it because I'm just trying to do what you're doing, which is make your elected accountable. Words have meanings, and so do actions. And here is yet, and this is to designate, I kept this so you know, no, this is the ordinance, it's a 44 page ordinance, and this is page one of 44 at the very bottom of, the, of page one. And this is the recital, whereas the city of Norfolk PZAB held yet another public hearing, January 6, 2022, to receive public comments. And this is to show where we are in the ordinance. We just left the previous recital and we're down to page, this will be page two. And here's the ordinance number. And here are two recitals, whereas the city commission held properly noticed public hearings at first and second reading of this ordinance to review the recommendations of PZAB and to receive public comments on the tree amendments to the ULTC. Keep this in mind, all of those meetings, the PZAB was pulled in, the consultant was pulled in, all of this in order to have this ordinance 2021-46 written, written and approved by 
and we're gonna with the possible exception of Alice White it was definitely it was approved prior by Miss Debbie Jill Luke Pete Emmerich and Barbara Langdon uh, here's the second here's the next resettle whereas the City Commission has determined that these amendments are consistent with the comprehensive plan and finds that the proposed amendments serve the public health safety and welfare of the citizens of the city of Northport. Keep this recital in mind as we continue through this particular segment of the Torchy Blame series. Now this is just under the recitals. These are the findings. Read all this for yourself because I don't want to get too involved, but these are extremely important findings for your environment. Now remember, this was approved. This ordinance was approved, and the the date that the tree ordinance would go into effect, all of this was approved previously. And again, this is all in your ordinance. It's in the backup documents. Go to April 7, 2022 special meeting and pull down the ordinance and you will find this is that's all i'm reading from here's page 2 of 44 so that you have some idea this is the second part of the findings multiple multiple findings why the tree ordinance 2021-46 was important why it was put in place the clear thinking of why this was approved the minutes from the meeting of april 4 when whatever Mr. Fletcher referred to. And by the way, it was not Mr. Fletcher, the city manager's idea to put this item on. This was a decision made on the dais, but we don't know who approved the decision to hold this special meeting for the emergency ordinance. And the emergency ordinance, again, 2022, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll have to look at the, the item number. You can get all this in the backup documents. The purpose was to extend the time that developers had to implement the tree ordinance and to extend it by 45 days. And so I requested the minutes of the April 7, 20, 2022 special meeting. You can get it. Just go to my um, special, you can either, actually you can ask for it. They give, they give these to you pretty quick, these minutes. And I wanted to just get down to First of all, these are all public commenters. These were e-comments. David Arianati, opposition to the delay in the, this particular emergency ordinance. He objected to it, objected to it. Aaron Hall, Amanda Helstowski, all objected to delaying the implementation of the tree ordinance that had gone through multiple, multiple, multiple meetings and approved and pushed on through years. And here we have, again, more opposition. And then here is the, this, these are the minutes. And we actually did listen to this as much as we didn't want to. It was only 50 minutes and about five minutes, 10 minutes was taken up in administrative matters. So more public comment, more e-comments. These are all public commenters. Here's somebody, Carla Sykes, expressed support in delaying. Trisha Murray expressed support in delaying the tree ordinance. Bill Gobin expressed opposition. Mildred Hubbard, opposition. So you can pause and read this for yourself or request these, request these draft minutes yourself. One of, the min one of the questions Mr. Emmerich had for the city attorney was, was actually to emphasize that there needed to be a super majority vote in order to approve the emergency ordinance that they're here today or this day, 4722 at the special meeting. And the city attorney, Amber Slayton, agreed that there needed to be four votes in order to delay implementing the tree ordinance. And so here are some more. 
Ms. Ray, I, I think this is the new general development or the new person in general services. Um, Harry Taylor spoke on the willingness to pay fines and fees for removing protected and heritage trees. Victor Dobrin spoke, expressed opposition in delaying the tree ordinance. All right, so then we had a motion, and I can tell you that because I don't think it's, I don't think it's in the edit that we're going to present to you. Miss Debbie did make the motion to extend for the developers implementing the tree ordinance that she had worked on since she'd been in office. And remember, by the way, she campaigned in 2016, Miss Debbie McDowell did. She was gonna, going to do totally away with clear cutting. That's, that's what she campaigned on. All of her campaign um, documents have been removed from the internet. So if you were not fast enough to copy what she talked about, you'll never know because she's a liar. You'll never know what she did or didn't campaign on. But I can tell you because I was hearing from people as I was knocking on doors while well, they said to me, some of them, you are going to totally do away with clear cutting. I would, this is the garbage that was left over by Miss Debbie. And there are some people that are passionate about, about this, but Miss Debbie as well as Lindy Yates were all big on um, getting it, it inciting people. So I'd have to explain to the people, well, it isn't that easy because you're talking about property rights, the people that own the property that the trees that you're requesting the trees not be cut down from, they have property rights. So it, it was an issue that um, was never concluded. Obviously, it's still not concluded. So Miss Debbie makes the motion to approve the ordinance, meaning the 2022-11 emergency ordinance, meaning let's extend 45 days implementation of the tree ordinance. And it was seconded by Ms. Luke. And the motion failed because Pete Emmerich and um, Alice White said, no, we're not going to extend the ordinance. We've had plenty of time and et cetera. And of course, Barbara Langdon joined in the other the other two, the two haters, because she's all about big development. Got a lot of money too from Pat Neal when she wrote in her campaign. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to present, we're going to present that one of the, our edits right now. And before, let me go to one more screenshot because I want to point out a few things that might, might be, help you help entertain you a little as you are listening to this this um, edit from the meeting from 4722, which was a special meeting. Uh, just, and maybe just to clarify a bit, a special meeting requires more notice, um, you know, 24 hours at least posting notice and agenda posted, which are not required for a quote unquote emergency meeting. So here we have more, more notice to the public than you would for an emergency meeting. Okay. Uh, and definitely agree with Commissioner White. Um, a 45 day thing that we pulled on them when they requested 90 days, made them jump through hoops that were lit on fire. <laughs> so excellent job on their part. Um, actually, if we had taken their recommendation of 90 days, we wouldn't even be in this meeting if we had understood what the complexities were and what um, other circumstances we might be bringing forward meant at that point in time, we may have made a little more wiser decision uh, for all parties. My reason for wanting the 90 day is not only to comply with what uh, was recommended from our staff who are the experts, but it, it really doesn't have anything to do with the developer or the builder. Uh, I understand the builder who takes care of those special houses and stuff are trying to work for their, their homeowner that's hired them and they're trying to crack the whip to, to get the contract done. But I'd been contacted by our regular citizens who are trying to be their own contractor. 
who were doing all of this themselves, and they were in the middle of that 17-step procedure, and they didn't, they were down to the minute dollars of what they could spend. And they'd already done, looked at, you know, all of the ins and outs of what the tree portion of their lot was going to cost. And this was throwing more hardship on them. And um, my heart went out to the, to the homeowner that is in that type of situation. Yes, we'd been talking about this ordinance for probably six years. And anybody who works in the industry was well aware of it coming. I could not accept changing anything within the ordinance, but to allow the time that staff recommended so that these homeowners that are trying to develop and, and get a home for their family within their budget tugged at my heartstring. And so my reason for this 45 more days is for them and them alone. Thank you, sir. Commissioner McDowell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, since I was the instigator of, thank you, Mayor. Since uh, I was the instigator of creating the agenda item that we heard on April. Bill says audio. I don't know why. Oh, okay. It's off now. Oh, no. It's over there now. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm not going to repeat a lot of the things that I had said at Monday's meeting, um, but I want to, for the people that are here, for the citizens that are, that are watching, because I'm sure there are plenty, um, when the commission approved the ordinance on February 22nd with the effective date of April 8th, if I had understood all of the differing perspectives, the homeowners, staff, the home builders of this tree code, um, I would have made a motion not for the 45 days, but for the 90 days. Um, that was what was originally requested. It was my ignorance on the building process and not understanding that you don't just go get a tree survey and submit it and, and get your building permit. There's a whole process that has to be followed. Um, I know a lot of people are blaming and thinking that the home builders are the ones behind all this. Absolutely not. This was my doing. The home builders are advocating for their clients. They recognize the hardship that their clients are going to go through. There are many future homeowners who are caught in this middle from the time they have their contract until their permit is issued, and they're gonna have to start that process over if we go with this implementation date tomorrow. And I agree with what Commissioner White said that come Feb um, May 15th, I am not going to be repeating this. Absolutely not. And if any other commissioner does, I would absolutely agree. No, this is done. This is over. Staff requested 90 days. We made it 45. Then we realized, ooh, there's a lot of other underlining things going on and go back to the 90 days. The, the biggest part of this, outside of what uh, Commissioner Luke just mentioned with those private home builders, is this, this is going to harm these home builders in so many ways if it gets delayed because they don't have a permit yet. They're still in the process of getting all those documents in a row to submit for a permit. This could jeopardize their contract to build. It could jeopardize their finances associated with that contract. It could also affect their living arrangements. A lot of these homeowners, potential future homeowners, are living in rented places. Those leases are going to expire because they're expecting to move into their home on this date, and this may delay it even more. And with the housing stock that we have, they may not be able to get a place. If I was waiting for a permit to build my home, just like anybody else, 
I'm sure everybody would want to have a little bit of grace, the, the grace period to be extended to that 45 additional days. I know I've advocated for getting this tree code done for many, many years too. <laughs> Um, but I also need to be fair to those that are caught in the middle of this new code and obtaining their permit. So thank you for hearing me out. And Mr. Dobin, Victor Dobin, please. Victor Dobrin, 20327 Real Circle. I will give a few moments for the people of Ukraine who are really under stress and the people who died in Ukraine. I have to say that this ordinance doesn't deserve any emergency. As you know, in this world, there are people who really have it tough. If we think that this is helping anybody in Northport, then we are living on a different planet. So thank you, Commissioner White, for standing up and presenting your principles. I am for the homeowners always, you know, on their side. However, I don't see the rational there at all. I rather see the connection, which if I were to look into past campaign, electoral campaign can tell me the truth. I'm not going to do it today. But I'm going to ask you today to vote your, your conscience as you depart from any links such as suggested one and do the right thing. You voted this. You have the right to do it. Yes, I, I, uh, I'm sensitive to, to the explanation of the builders, but you have the opportunity, if the process is started, as the mayor has suggested, we are already grandfather on that. Yes, would be good a checklist to have to expedite the processing, and maybe that's the next thing you will suggest tonight after you deny the passing of this. I do agree, and I will volunteer. If you want, you know, as volunteer on the other one with the will done, I will volunteer. But, but give the people of Northport a chance. 
and then help the developers as well by putting someone in charge in the stuff to streamline the process. I understand that. I don't like fuzzy things. That's all I have to say. Thank you. And again, I'm, I'm available for the focus group for the impact fees, which are very important if you do care of, of the people of Northport. Thank you. Thank you. The reason I dissented, and I'll give you the opportunity after I go, is we did stress staff to get this ordinance done in 45 days, and they are ready to go. And I know that they will work with developers getting this aligned going forward. This is a work in progress. The people have screamed loud and clear for tree protection out there for many, many years. And I read a lot of comments, had a lot of conversations, and I have to listen to the people. So that's why I changed my vote from the last meeting to this meeting. Commissioner White. 